In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your customer data to extract relevant audiences for retention and loyalty remarketing on Google Ads. The video has four parts. I'm going to start off by showing you the basics of Google Customer Match. Then I'm going to walk you through two examples. One is creating a list for retention marketing, and the other one is creating a list for running loyalty campaigns. Finally, I'm going to show you how to upload the lists to Google Ads and point you to resources for automating the process. So Google Customer Match lets marketers use their first-party data to re-engage with customers across different platforms. You can re-engage on Google Search, in Gmail, on YouTube, Display, and in the shopping tabs. And the way it works is that you upload a list of customer emails of customers that you want to re-engage, and Google then matches that list to customers on their platform and lets you market to the list specifically. Google Customer Match is a three-step process. The first step is to create the list, hash the emails, and then upload it to Google. The next step is to create the campaigns you want to run. The third step is Google showing ads to the customers on that list. I'm now going to show you how to create two of the most important lists for increasing the average customer lifetime value of the customer base. So in this chart, you see two potential journeys of a newly acquired customer. The journey is typically divided into three phases, the acquisition phase, the activation phase, and the retention phase. In order to ensure that customers don't end up as one-time buyers and instead become loyal, you need to re-engage promising customers and customers that show signs of fading away. The re-engagement of the customer happens in the activation phase and the retention phase. And your transaction data, the orders, contain the signals needed to trigger these campaigns. The challenge is to identify when a customer is a promising customer and when a customer shows signs of fading away. To illustrate this, I've depicted eight different purchase patterns of newly acquired customers. The white circles correspond to orders and the size of the circle corresponds to the order value. So when trying to understand the state of the customer, you want to look at the purchase cadence, the order recency, the order frequency, and the size of the orders. So if you take a look at the customer that is represented in the fourth row, you can see that the customer is negatively changing the purchase cadence. And this is a churn signal. If you have a look at row number six, you can see a customer that is positively changing the purchase cadence. These differences in purchase patterns can take many different forms and they can be hard to detect, which is why you want to use a model for this and not set up business rules. I'm now going to show you how to do this with a model in Python. And to do that, we're going to import a few libraries. First of all, we need the Shopify data library that we wrote in an earlier video. And then we're going to import lifetimes, which is the model we're going to use to detect these purchase patterns or the changes in purchase cadence to uh, filter out customers for retention and for loyalty marketing. Then we extract the transaction data and in this case from Shopify, we do that with the email field because we need that. And then we hash the email field using Python's built-in hashlib. These email addresses are fake, which is why I'm showing them here just for the purpose of the video. The next thing we're going to do is we want to train the beta GU fitter that we get from the lifetimes library. And that allows us to use recency, frequency, and the customer age to predict the number of orders a customer is expected to make in the future and the probability that a customer is still active. With the trained model, we can proceed to extract all the customers that are lapsing. So we define a function called alive that estimates the conditional probability that a customer is still alive, giving the frequency, recency, and age of the customer. Then we filter out all customers with a probability less than 0.5 and save the resulting list of hashed emails to a CSV file with pandas that we call retention CSV. Then we do something similar to identify the most promising customers. Here we define a function predicting the conditional expected purchases for each customer and use that to filter out customers expected to make at least one more purchase. We call that function orders. And the resulting list of hashed emails is again saved to a file. In this case, we call the file loyalty CSV. 
So now you have two targeted lists of customers you can use for re-engagement campaigns on Google Ads. The last step is simply to upload these lists to Google Customer Match. I'll leave a link to the instructions below. Once you have created your first few successful re-engagement campaigns, you can fully automate this process by running the Python scripts on Google Cloud and feeding or updating these lists programmatically via the Google Ads API client. Note that this is a pretty advanced API, so I recommend that you start off by simply uploading the lists. That's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe for similar content in the future. Thanks for watching.